SpaceX Mechazilla is on its way to revolutionizing the space industry, and Elon Musk is the person who stands at the forefront of this incredible and mind-blowing piece of technology. It is the first of its kind as no other space exploration firm ever had the idea of catching their spacecraft via massive chopsticks as it lands back to Earth. Elon Musk believes he can handle three Starship liftoffs daily to ferry construction supplies to a Martian city. The future is finally better than the future was. Welcome to Liftoff, your first place where you will find everything space and often SpaceX. In today's video, we will see to what extent Mechazilla will play a significant role to catch three Starship rockets per day in motion. Let's get started. When Musk announced his Starship booster recovery strategy, everyone thought he was becoming crazy, like a scientist in science fiction movies. But with the craziness and dedication, SpaceX has started its preparation for the installation of a pair of giant arms designed to lift and catch Starships and Super Heavy boosters to make the ship's landing in one piece. Elon Musk regarded this as Mechazilla, which is almost finished to get a complete form and function. At first, Musk revealed the plan of Zilla in December 2020, and the mission started in June 2021. The structure of Mechazilla has three arms. Beginning on August 29th, SpaceX installed Starship's QD arm on the launch tower. About a month later, the QD arm was mostly finished off with the installation of a claw-like grabber meant to stabilize Super Heavy and is now only missing its namesake, Quick Disconnect, an actuating device that will connect Starship to the pad and rapidly disconnect at liftoff. Assembly of the last three major components of Mechazilla, a carriage-like structure and two giant arms, began in July and much like the tower's QD arm, wrapped up about three months later. The past few weeks have seen a flurry of activity at SpaceX's Boca Chica launch complex. In addition to the SN20 prototype, completing a static fire test with three of the new Raptor Vacuum 6 engines this month. The facility's Mechazilla launch tower recently received a giant pair of steel arms, once integrated with the 135-meter tower. These arms will be responsible for catching spent Starships and Super Heavy boosters as they return to Earth. The tower will also prepare missions by stacking first-stage boosters with Starships and refueling these elements for the next launch. In this respect, the launch tower is a crucial piece of orbital launch site architecture that Elon Musk has planned for Boca Chica. Once the Starship completes its first orbital flight test, which could happen soon, Boca Chica will become a spaceflight hub where launches and retrievals are conducted regularly. In addition to the launch tower, several elements will be added to the OLS as part of its ground support equipment site. This will likely include additional fuel tanks, water tanks, pipelines and pumping stations, as well as other amenities. Together, the launch tower and the GSE will enable SpaceX to launch, retrieve, refuel and relaunch its vehicles, ensuring rapid reusability and minimize turnaround time. These giant steel arms nicknamed the chopsticks by the crews at Boca Chica are mounted to a carriage-like structure. The tower, meanwhile, is equipped with rails that have a series of skates, which the ground crews attached to the carriage using a series of large pins. Once the arms are integrated, they will be paired with the third quick disconnect arm that will stabilize boosters whenever they are in process of being stacked with the Starship. The QD arm is also tasked with distributing power, comms links and 2.4 million pounds of cryogenically cooled propellants to the upper stage. This was the first component installed aboard the launch tower, which took place in late August, about a month after the crews finished stacking the tower. Around the same time, construction began on the carriage-like structure and the two giant arms, which took about three months to complete. On October the 6th, SpaceX began combining those three main parts by flipping the carriage, a bit like a spine and ribcage with skates, that attached to the rails on the launch tower's legs vertical and staging it on a temporary support structure. Both chopsticks were then flipped into the correct orientation and moved into position with the separate cranes for installation on the carriage slash backbone. From start to finish, that process took around 9 to 10 days and culminated with the installation of two giant cylindrical pins with built-in bearings on October the 14th and 15th. By the 17th, both cranes had detached from the assembled Mechazilla arms and carriages were leaving it precisely balanced against the support structure and more or less freestanding. 
By October 20th, they completed the first step of installing the carriage and arms onto the rail skates using the facility's largest crane. Twelve connections need to be made in total before the catch arms will be part of the tower without the help of a crane. However, before the catch arms can perform on their own, the ground crews also need to finish installing the hundreds of meters of steel cable that will support the carriage and arms, and, with the help of a system of pulleys, lift it up and down. They also need to finish work on the giant cable carrier that will connect the structure to the ground and control systems. In other news, Elon Musk recently divulged that the long-awaited orbital flight test could take place sometime in November. Musk shared the news via Twitter, indicating that the test could happen if all goes well and pending approval by the Federal Aviation Administration. This test will see the SN20 prototype fly at an altitude of 200 kilometers, then make a soft touchdown on the landing pad. Once complete, this flight will validate the Starship as an orbital vehicle and demonstrate its ability to return from space safely. For this reason, the SN20 is the first prototype to be outfitted with heat-resistant tiles to protect the prototype's stainless steel hull from the scorching heat it will encounter during atmospheric re-entry. This update came a day after the SN20 prototype successfully concluded the first static fire test of the Vacuum Raptor Engine 6. These engines have a larger nozzle than the Raptor engines optimized for sea level, which gives them improved performance in the airless environment of space. The SN20 will also have three of these Raptor engines to ensure it can make a controlled landing once it's returned to Earth's atmosphere. Once this orbital flight is complete, the Starship will officially be ready to move into commercial flights. These developments are timely, given that Musk hopes to send the Starship on its inaugural mission by 2023. This mission is being financed by Japanese billionaire, entrepreneur and art collector Yasaku Maezawa and will see a crew of eight artists making a circumlunar flight, the purpose of which will be to inspire art and raise SpaceX's profile. Musk has also indicated that his company's plans to send uncrewed missions to Mars by 2024, followed by crewed missions by 2026. That's a tall order for sure, and such a plan requires a robust testing schedule. But if this latest news from South Texas is any indication, SpaceX might make those deadlines. Now that we have come to the end of the video, I hope you liked it. If you want to see more upcoming videos about space and SpaceX, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button. Thank you so much for your support, and I'll see you next time.